Hello hackers, welcome to the new video where we are going to hack exploiting an API endpoint using documentation from Web Security Academy and powered by Portswagger. In this lab, our challenge is very easy. All what we have to do is to find the API documentation and then delete user call it Carlos. And to do that, we have a credential of winner and password of Peter that help us to discover the API. But before moving forward, guys, we have some recommendation in here. You have to know the basics of API and you have to know what is the API documentation is. You have to know how to use the documentation to make a successful attack. And also you have to know how to discover the API documentation so guys, if you don't know too much about the API testing, please go to the API testing to learn more about it. And now let me show you some of the tricks. Let's go to the HTTP request method documentation. And then here guys, in this challenge, we are going to use some of these requests over here that we are going to use it to test our API endpoints. And here we go guys, without further ado, let's go and hack. And here we go guys. So first, let me activate Foxy Proxy. I'm using Community Edition. Let's go to the proxy, enter spec twice and go to HTTP history. So first I need to know how this item came from the backend. So let me refresh the page. And here we go. Now you can see I only have two endpoints. And if I check them, you can see in here it's a HTML document. So which means these item came with the HTML page not with a specific API endpoint. So let me go to the my account and here we go. Now I only have this login page. So let me use my credential of winner and password of Peter. And here we go. Now let me log in. And now let's discover the endpoints. You can see we have this post method, but in here we don't have anything special. But in here, as you can see, we have very interesting endpoint, which include the words API. So let me click on it and let me check it. So you can see it ends with a .js, which means this is a JavaScript file and we can verify it in the content type in here. So let me make it more big so I can see the content and let me discover it one by one. So first we have this function of clear errors nothing interesting inside it. Let me see the next one. We have display error message. Also, we don't have something interesting in here. Let me see the next one. We have this handle response and also nothing is important. But in here, guys, we have this change email, which is absolutely related to this function over here. And as you can see in here, we have this fetch method which means this function uses another endpoint to make this request happen. And as you can see in the URI, we have form.action and then we have encoded endpoint of the username, which is something very interesting. And also we have a method called patch and we have a body with a JSON containing the email. So this is how this functionality works, but let me check the components one by one. So let me see the form action over here. Let's click right. Let's go to enter spect and here we go. Now let me make it more big and now let me check this form over here. So in here we have the form that action. So this is the action we have slash API user, which is absolutely different than this endpoint. So this is can be the API that I'm looking for. So we have the slash slash user and then we have the username and it uses a patch method containing the email address in here. So let me try it and let me introspect it using perp. So let's say popo at hack dot com. So I'm going to change my user's email and let me update. And here we go. Now you can see we have this patch method in here and let me just say it. And here we go. Now let me send it to repeater and let me test it. So what I'm going to do guys in this step, I'm going to make the API testing and test this endpoint one by one and see if one of these methods in here is available to make tests, let me send the request again and see. 
And here we go. Now we change the email again. And now let me test these methods one by one and see the difference. So let me go to the get method, which is the first one. And let me send. And here we go. Now I can see my information. And by default, the get doesn't need anybody. So let me just delete it over here. And let me send again. You can see I'm still able to get an information in here. So let me test it and let me delete my cookie, which means I'm no longer logging with the system. And let me see. And here we go. Now I'm not authorized it, which means I'm not connected. So let me back again. Now let me try to change my username. So my target is Carlos. And let me see. And here we go. Now I get the information of one of the other users. So this is absolutely a bug. And this is what we call it information disclosure, which means this API makes anyone who's connecting with the system able to get another user's information. So now let me try to see if I'm able to make another actions using this endpoint. So as you can see, guys, you can test all these methods over here. One of them call it put, which means replace all the items over here, which means replace all the content over here. And we have delete, which we can delete the users. And also we have the patch that we already saw it that updates the email. So I'm not going to test all these methods here, but my target now is to find the hidden documentation. So now let me try to remove the username and see if I'm able to get something over here. So let me remove it. And here we go. Now he say a malformed URL, which is we have nothing in here. Let me try to remove the slash and see. The same. Now let me try to remove the user and let me see. And here we go. Now we have something interesting. We have 200 status and we have HTML file. Let me render it and see what I got. And here we go, guys. Now we found the API documentation and what we have exactly here. We have, we have the method of get, we have the delete, and we have the patch. So we already saw the patch method that have an email in its body to change the email. And we already saw the get method to get all the informations about the user and return the user object in here. But we have another method called delete and if we check over here, as you can see, we have this delete method that deletes the specific resource. And this is the method that I'm going to use. So let me resend this method again to the repeater. And here we go. Now what we have in here exactly, we have slash user and then it needs the username. And let me just do it. Let me say user and let me say callus is my target. And the method, as you can see, it's delete. So let me use delete method in here. And let me send. And here we go, guys. Now we have a status and we have a user deleted and we have a status of 200, which means the Carlos is successfully deleted from the backend. So now let me back to the lab. Let me close this one. Let me refresh the page and check. And here we go, guys. Now we finally solve the lab. But before moving forward and close this video, let me show you some of the other methods that aren't included in the documentation and see the result. So as you can see, we have post and put that aren't included in the methods. So let me try to test them and let me see what's going to happen. So let's say post in here and let me send. And now as you can see, we have this method not allowed. And if I do it with the put, also, I have the method not allowed. So one of the tips, guys, if the system doesn't include the hidden documentation or you didn't find the documentation, you can use these HTTP request methods to see which one of them is able to make the action in the server. And here we go, guys. I hope that you learned something new from this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like the video. If you have any question or you need any help, please put it in the comment below and stay tuned for the next video.